Well, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to welcome you out on tonight to the Whitfield Harrington Show. I am your host, Whitfield Harrington. This is a show where we take a look at the things that are going on in our natural world, and we try to see things through a set of spiritual lenses. So as always, let me begin with a prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you now for the opportunity to be able to speak by way of radio and internet on today, God. I pray, Father, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight on tonight. For you are my strength and my redeemer, O God. These things we thank you for and we praise you for them now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I am um, here in the studio again. Grateful to be able to share some things that I think uh, concerning some of the things that we see unfolding before our eyes now. Um, I want you to understand that sometimes what looks like a um, victory can sometimes be a wake-up call. All right? A lot of times we look at what we see on television and we, and we, um, we embrace an opportunity to celebrate sometimes too soon. Um, I think I may have said this once, and I'll say it again. Um, during the American Revolutionary War, um, General George Washington, the first president of the United States, was faced with a daunting task of taking on some mercenaries who were considered Haitian soldiers who were the best soldiers in the world at the time. Um, and unfortunate for him, he had untrained soldiers and very few of them. And many of them had deserted. And finally, he managed to put together a battle plan that changed the course of the American Revolution War. Um, and that was the Battle of Trenton. And to make a long story short, he just decided that he would catch the s soldiers or the Haitian soldiers sleeping um, after Christmas Day. And the surprise attack worked well. He was able to capture that fort without having to lose one single man. And then finally when he caught the fort, his guys, they had food, they had shelter, they were happy, they were excited, and he told them, grab what you can, you got 30 minutes and we're leaving. And they wanted to, you know, contend with the general. And he understood that just because you have what perceives to be a small victory, we're still fighting a war. So we're going to put this river between us and the British Army. And that's what he did. Now, had he decided to get comfortable and, and, and settle down there in that fort that night, uh, this may not be the United States of America. So I'm implying that there are things that are going on, and I know many of us are watching television and you're watching the news and you're seeing things. This is the time for the saints to be prepared. This is not the time to celebrate. I know we want to celebrate. Some of us want to celebrate because of what we're seeing happening. But this is the time for the saints to buckle down even more because there are some things that are about to happen. And so as the Spirit is telling me, the first thing we need to do as Christians in America, hear me and hear me clearly, hear me and hear me well, as I like to say, pray for Biden's health. Pray for his health health. There are some things that are about to trigger along the lines of his health where there are some activities of the enemy that wants to move him out of the way and to escort some wickedness into play. But it is my prayer that God by his divine mercies block the agenda of witchcraft in America because it is so prevalent in what it's doing, that it's going to become crystal clear in just a moment. But that's why I'm telling you to open your eyes now and pray. Because what's going to happen is this exposure is about to be blown wide open. It's about to come full scale. But what's going to happen is no matter what happens, there are going to be voices speaking through the media spinning the story in such a way that you will still believe what they're telling you versus what you're seeing. And you know how a, a, a magician is, that the, how he makes an elephant um, disappears in front of an entire uh, room of people? 
some kind of way that they pull the trick off and they make you believe that he's made an elephant disappear. And, and the reality of this is just an illusion. And so you're about to see the media do this wonderful illusionary, uh, I don't even know the word for what you're about to see, spinning of the truth as it begins to unfold. There are things that I'm seeing and I'm, and I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. Sometimes I just, oh God, I have to pray so I can pray. But it's, it's, it's an urgency in the spirit that we pray not just for ourselves, not just for our neighbors, not just for uh, our loved ones, not just for our enemies, but not, I mean for the nations. It is an urgency. I, I see things going like bombs, different things going off. And some of the other people, prayer partners, are seeing things as well like terrorist attacks. All of these things coming upon us because we as Americans, let me tell you something. We don't understand that a lot of times we invite things upon ourselves because in order for certain negative things to happen in the natural, it requires a spiritual negative energy to pull it into the natural. So all of the arguing and the bickering and the political posturing concerning this position and that position, and we go back and forth, back and forth, and we feel like we got to sit there and root like we're rooting for a football team. This is not the Super Bowl. This is a nation. Yes, we have our difference of opinion, and yes, we have our difference in beliefs, but we still dwell in the same country. You know, one of the most brilliant statements I ever heard was from a guy that I was riding with one day. He was from a foreign country, and he, he gave an illustration of American politics and how brilliant it was. I mentioned to the man that there are currently about three governors from the state of Illinois who are currently in prison. But I was making the statement and another gentleman was agreeing with me to how corrupt our system was. And the gentleman from the other country said, no, you all are misunderstanding your, the success of your own system. The fact that you have governors in prison is a sign that your system works. There are places where there are no politicians in prison. That's a sign that it doesn't work. And he said back then, he says, and as for your presidents, he says, do you all realize that you only have that problem for four years? He says, it's just like a common cold. There's no cure for it, but it eventually goes away. But yet, it's as if we're, as Americans, we're willing to go through the process of creating a scenario to where we're going to have an open heart surgery performed to clear the mucus out of our chest. It eventually goes away like a cold. And so we go to extremes, 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 Year after year, election after election, we're becoming more and more extreme. As the Bible says, the love of many is waxing cold. And this is what's happening. It's almost like a pressure cooker. And you continue to see these things. You continue to see them. And all of a sudden, kaboom. The pressure cooker cracks. We invite disaster. That's why it's so important now to know that chaos is coming. It's coming. Keep seeing it. Keep seeing it. Keep hearing. Pray for the nations. Pray for the nations. Pray for the nations. I'm even seeing um, faces of congressmen and different things that are going on behind closed doors. And God is compelling us to pray. Saints, pray, pray, pray. We have to remember, as the Apostle Paul says, that we are ambassadors of Christ. We have an obligation to behave in such a manner that we represent the kingdom of God here on earth. So the policies that we're supposed to stand for are the policies that heaven stands for, not the policies of a particular political party of our particular preference. But what heaven stands for, that's what we're supposed to stand for. And it's unfortunate that sometimes ministries can lose sight of that. And what ends up happening is, is when an ambassador no longer represents the views of the motherland or the mother country, that ambassador can be pulled. And that's what's happening in this season. That a lot of ministries are slowly but surely beginning to turn away from the policies of heaven. 
And in this season, this is not the season to be off. I'm sorry. If you've been in ministry one year, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, this is not the season to be off. If you remember in the book of Samuel, chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 3, when God is calling Samuel for the first time, he doesn't know what's happening. And Eli has to explain to him that this is God calling you. And then he instructs Samuel how to go and to hear from God. And God speaks a word to this little child concerning the nation of Israel. And he also casts his judgment on Eli to the child. And it's amazing that all of this happened right before the fire was about to go out in the temple. Right before the fire was about to go out. God spoke and called Samuel. And what we're witnessing now is you're witnessing the exodus of one generation and God calling forth another generation. I'm praying, I'm interceding for those who have gone before us. But hear me and hear me well. There's only so much prayer that somebody else can pray for you. It's time for the older generation of Christians and spiritual leadership to really get on your knees and get in touch with heaven and not allow your the lights on a platform to blind you to think that it's God, but it's just the spotlight because the spotlight can make you think that it's the light from heaven, but it's just a spotlight. So this is the time to really buckle down in prayer and to consecrate ourselves. We don't have the big crowds anymore right now. So we really have time to pull aside to fast and to pray and to seek God so that we're on point in this season because God is putting a check mark on those who are truly His. Because despite the fact that all of these things are about to take place, we as the people of God, hear me and hear me well, we have to make progress under pressure. I'll say it again. We now have to make progress under tremendous pressure. Things are going to unfold, but your faith has to be on building the kingdom of God, winning souls for Christ, being firm in your faith concerning what God has spoken, being firm in your faith knowing what God has said will come to pass, being firm in knowing that when God speaks to you, and you pronounce what he says, it shall come to pass. There is no need for a person who hears from God to go on an apology tour concerning the things of God. Everybody thought Noah was a false prophet until it started raining. And that was a long time that he kept saying, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain. And it maybe it made him feel bad, but I'm saying this to encourage the prophets of this generation who are hearing from God, who are seeing things that are coming and coming soon. Don't try to be relevant. Just be in a place that where you are in a consistent, right relationship with God. Stay in your lane and work on what God has called you to finish. It's time to build the kingdom of God. Because when we begin to see these things now, this is a test that's coming to the people of God. It's, it's, it's strange, but although all of these things are coming, there are things that have already been pronounced after this season is over that God has already started pronouncing. This is going to happen and that is going to happen. And one of the things that I stress and, I, and the importance is What's in season now has already been developed behind the scenes. In other words, if you go to, to, to a car lot and get a 2021 car, they didn't start making that car in 2021. They started developing that car back in 2020 and probably 2019, making adjustments to it to bring it to the market for 2021. So what God is doing in this season now, those things have been developed and spoken. And now they're coming to light in this season. 
So this is where we have to be. We have to start seeing things coming months in advance. Six, 12, 18 months in advance and you're telling people to get ready, to get ready, to get ready so that we're not caught off guard concerning the things that are about to happen. One of the things that children of God hear me and hear me well, you have to have a prayer life in the next coming days. You, ha I say it, I'll say it again. You have to stop playing and start praying right away. This is the time to really have a prayer life, a consistent prayer life, and not one that you're simply trying to, to develop. It's all right to be in a development stage, but right now you're going to see in a few minutes, the enemy is going to respect those whose fire is hot enough. Because right now, I say this, and I say this because the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of witchcraft is having like a parade in America. It's just parading all over the place, doing all types of things. And this is a, this is a subject, yes, Lord, that most churches don't talk about. Not only do they not talk about it, they don't even understand it or know how to fight it or to deal with it. But here it is now. It's mainstream. In your face. Having a field day. And now we're having to pray and having to deal with this spirit and then teach people. For those of us who know how to teach it, teach people how to deal with it and how to prepare themselves for it. For it. Hear me and hear me well. Witchcraft doesn't play where a fire burns hot. Flies do not land on a hot skillet. They will not do it. So as long as you are on fire for God, you don't really have to deal with a lot of the foolishness that the enemy produces through the spirit of witchcraft and control. But you recognize that there are certain ways to consecrate yourself and to pray and to invite God into your prayers and invite God into your life so that when these things begin to come to you, you're not hindered by them. It becomes more of an annoyance than anything else. And I feel compelled, I am compelled, to switch gears in this season. Rather than to slow down, I'm going to speed up because this is a moment where we really and truly have to begin to do more and more to develop our sisters and brothers now in the faith. So I'm praying with the body of Christ on the day that we do not fail this test. Don't let it be said that you went through this season and you really didn't comprehend until it was a little too late because persecution is coming. It's coming. That's why I'm, I'm preaching, not just talking, I'm preaching, being prepared for it, having your spiritual fire so hot that you are too hot for the enemy to handle. Because in the realms of the spirit, the devil can see a Christian that's on fire as a blazing fire. Demons can't stand the sight of it. Witches don't play with it. They wait for that fire to be extinguished by the many ways that they know how to extinguish a fire. And you have to be ever so careful to ensure that you maintain your spiritual fire. And you don't invite in these opportunities for the enemy to so um, secretively put your spiritual fire out or you even to participate in something that helps to put your spiritual fire out because you're going to need it. You need to learn how to fast. I wish I had my notebook with me, my other notebook with me. You need to um, know how to fast. Fasting produces spiritual fire. It gets you where you're going faster in the spirit. It's time to build a spiritual fire and to be at a place to where your prayer life is consistent every day because I cannot say this enough. 
I can't speak for God, but I just feel like there's just not enough prayers going up. Let me explain it to you this way. This is the best common way I know how to explain it. There used to be, I think it still is, but it was very popular um, back in the 90s and the 80s. It was a show called The Showtime at the Apollo. All right? And they would have what was called Amateur Night. And on Amateur Night, people would go out and they would perform acts. You know, this is where Michael Jackson and his brothers performed before they were popular. This is where a lot of people um, got their break on this stage at Amateur Night. But the catch was, in order to win Amateur Night, they brought all of the participants out. And they began to scream and holler for each participant according to how much they liked them. And whoever got the most applause won Amateur Night. When you look at the spiritual affairs of humanity, when it comes to who's invited into a territory, whether it's the spirit of God or the spirit of the enemy. It's like humanity. We put Satan on the stage and we invite God to the stage. And then we begin to cry out for the one that we want the most. When you have the wicked raising their voice, calling for demons, calling for judgment, calling for all of these things that are going to cause havoc in the earth. And then you have the saints who are just whispering when it's time to say we really want the Lord. This is what it, it in my mind and trying to explain it, this is what it's like. That the voice and the cry of God's people needs to rise up loud. Or you need at least two people. As the Bible says, if any two shall touch and agree, asking anything of the Father in the name of Jesus, it shall be given. So this is, a, this is where we are, where we have to understand that we need to lift up our voices in prayer more and more and more. Ask yourself, Pastor, I know the people are going, but where is the prayer line? Where is the unity of prayer to pray it? Because that's what's needed in this hour. Jesus said we should pray without ceasing. And I think that's so critical for us to, to do that in this season now. There is so much more that's going to unfold. And the Lord is going to come in. As we say, God is still holding the trump card. And I truly believe that the enemy has overplayed his hand. And he knows it. But he's trying to make the best he can happen with what he does have left. And that is to create more havoc, more chaos, more animosity, and cause the love of many to wax cold around us. And that's the issue that we're dealing with now. So it's so important now that we understand. Pay attention to what's going on in the world but stay in tune to what's coming out of the, the heavens. Get in prayer and stay in prayer. Get before God, fast and pray and consecrate yourself in this hour so that when this storm passes, you will come out stronger than you were before you went in. This is where we are. Thank you, Jesus. I'm praying on tonight. I'm praying for believers, even unbelievers, even those who are considered the enemies of God. I'm praying for them because if they are not beyond the point of redemption, they need prayer in this season. Whoever they are, wherever they are, they need prayer. So when we look at the political arena, there are things that we're inviting on ourselves. We're inviting death and destruction. The enemies of America are watching us. And they're waiting for an opportunity to strike us. And if we continue to nitpick and not pay attention to what's relevant, things will happen. Mind you, 
that the last time or the first time that President Trump was impeached, the coronavirus snuck up on us. Yeah. Now here we are again. It's just passed. But what's sneaking up on us now? This is so important that we pay attention to what's happening behind the scenes. You know, I'm almost out of breath. Not out of time, but out of breath. So I want to pray. Father in heaven, we thank you now. We thank you now for your word, your will, and what you desire to happen in our life. Lord, we pray for your grace and your mercy over this nation of America. We pray, O oh God, that the agenda of death and destruction over the nations would be blocked, O oh God. And that the assignment of the enemy would fail, O oh God. We pray now in the name of Jesus. We speak to the atmosphere. We speak to the elements, O oh God. And we block them with the blood of Jesus from participating in the grand scheme of the desires of the devil. In the name of Jesus. For we know that the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said he came that we might have life. And that we might have it more abundantly. And tonight, Father, we choose life over death and destruction. And we decree and declare, let the agenda of darkness over this nation be hindered. Let it be paralyzed in the name of Jesus. And open the eyes of the people in the nations, O oh God. From the poor pits to the pastors, O oh God, to the parking lots. All the way around the neighborhood. Help us to know the need to pray in this hour. So that we don't wait too late before we begin to call on your name. It's not your will that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. So we pray now for a spirit of repentance, O oh God. An outpouring of enlightenment. That the eyes of the people not just in America, but around the world, will be open to see the light that comes from the cross of Calvary. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. And continue to help those watchmen that are on the wall, O oh God, who are crying out to you day and night that your will will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. This is what we thank you for on tonight, O oh God, as we decree and declare that eyes shall be opened. The truth shall be revealed. Things that have been hidden shall be known. And we pray that at least those who seek you would be able to know your voice in this season. And not be persuaded, yes, by the prophets of Baal and the voices of falsehood. We thank you now, Heavenly Father, that you have loosed your angels in this hour to keep us in the way and these things we thank you for and we bless you for them now in jesus precious and mighty name we pray and we thank god amen and amen well i'm out of time now but i thank god that i'm in his will so until next week remember my saying it's time to stop playing and to start praying god bless you and have a wonderful week